Hi everyone and welcome to another one of my tutorials. This one is about how to get Protea, the one of the newest Warframes, and also how to do the Deadlock Protocol quest. Because you need to do the Deadlock Protocol quest to get the Protea blueprint. So, the first thing you have to do is go into your codex and start it. So right here, here we are in quests, and it's shown up right here, the Deadlock Protocol. However, I've already replay started replaying it already, so the begin option isn't here. There's also the option to view the cinematic again if you want. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get right into the mission. So, normally there will be some text appearing on the right side of the screen right here. However, due to a recording mistake, I can't record that text, and anyway, it's um, not really that important. Also, just so you know, I'm not going to be talking like about the lore like usual in my usual tutorials. This one is going to be purely about the gameplay mechanics, and we're going to get straight to the point because I usually ramble on way too much with the lore. Speaking of which, I'll now get right on to the first mission. So the first mission is Decipher the Deadlock. It's an interception mission on Venus, and this entire um, quest, uh, quest line is actually, in my opinion, quite deceiving. Because as you can see there, it starts off telling you that the level of the enemies is 10 to 13. And you might be thinking, hmm, well, this sounds like a very easy quest line to do. This should be no problem for me. I have, like, level 20 weapons and level 20 Warframe. Trust me, it gets much harder. In fact, because of the bosses you will face in this, I'll be calling this a not-beginner's quest line. So, if you are a beginner, and you've, like, only completed a few quests so far, like, let's say, if you've just completed Once Awake and War's Prize, do not attempt this. You most likely get super frustrated and not know what you're doing. Anyway... Now to explain how the interception mission works if you don't already know. If you do know how it works, you can pretty much skip you can pretty much uh, skip to uh, the the point I'll put on the screen now. Like I'll, I'll make a little pop-up and it'll show like the time point you can skip on the video that you can skip to, so because you probably already know how to do this. But if you don't know how to do this, I'll quickly explain how an interception mission works. So, for everyone who's still watching and wants to know, you have to go and go to near these satellite thingamajigs. And then, you should have to, you need to kill every enemy in the area, so you can capture it. What are you doing right now? Well, interception missions are kind of like uh, establishing control over Wi-Fi connection and hacking it. You want to make sure the data goes to your side and not the enemy side. An excellent way of doing that is killing the enemies. The enemies, of course, can take control, like, can take control over the connection again, and when that happens, you will hear a, a siren like is going on in the background, and they will walk over to one of the computer screens and start hacking them. So, you need to be quick on your feet, but, and make sure you get to all the nodes and turn them to your side, and then, well, yeah, that pretty much covers it. Then you just wait, wait for the timer to finish. You can, of course, if an enemy gets near a computer screen like this one, you can, of course, just whip out your gun or your blade or whatever and kill them. And that will stop them gaining control of the computer screen. I mean, and then the node. However, I'm having a little bit of trouble here because I'm not the fastest at doing this. So generally, the control keeps on flipping back. But as long as you get as the um, little progress bar on the side here is higher for your side, that means you're doing well. So now, if you excuse me, I'm going to play this interception mission and come back to you when it's done, because it is just more rounds of this, and it'll be pretty boring just hearing me talk about nothing, pretty much, and just trying to fill the dead air of this video while I play this mission. So yeah, I'll see you then. Right, so here we are, back after the cut. I'm in my ship, because right after that mission ended, it put me right here. So, next thing you have to do is talk to Utico in Fortuna, which means to obviously you have to have Fortuna unlocked if you want to, well, uh, play this mission. Like, you have to have the place unlocked. Unfortunately, though, the this, this place, like, what happens next is pretty much a cutscene that you can't skip. Oh yeah, by the way, I checked the time of how long it taken me to complete that mission, so, and the time of my recording, while I was busy finishing it, my recording was roughly three minutes long, and I'm pretty sure around about, like, two minutes of that maybe was the mission, and then the mission itself taken ten minutes, so basically eight more minutes to what I was already doing. 
Right, and now you just walk up to, well, as you can see, you walk up to like, the back room of Fortuna, which is just past Utico. You enter it, and, uh, hmm. Oh, neat. <laughs> Apparently, you can just press the jump button to skip through it all. So that is really neat. I didn't know. Uh, previous in like a lot of games you aren't able to do that, but I was uh, that's why you might have heard a bit of clacking because I was kind of just like mashing buttons on my keyboard like hmm is it escape is it enter is it space ooh is it A in my controller and it turns out yes A does it so yeah you can pretty much just uh, skip all the parts of the cutscene which you are uh, I mean you could do it if you want or you could uh, as well not do it your choice really I I'm just covering the uh, well, I guess you would probably be doing it in this case because I'm covering just the how to do it and not what the law is about and not what people are actually saying here. So pretty much, yeah, just we're going to be skipping all the cutscenes, including the ship flying one. Yeah, and then this mission requires you to basically, well, it, I remember it as it comes back to me, but follow the little yellow mark up. It'll tell you what to do pretty clearly. I'm right now just ignoring any uh, boxes or anything on my way. But while I'm getting there, I might as well talk a bit about this. So, I'm actually, um... I mean, the mission, this this mission itself is, in my opinion, the lore about it is quite fun. The way you have to get Protea is not fun at all, because you have to get these, you have to get these, uh, corpus who collect these things, who, like, walk around with these things called uh, granium crowns, and or granium crowns, and they're basically just giant coins. And, um, to k what you have to do later on is kill them, pretty much, and then use them to access this golden hand and go to a special part of the void. And in my opinion, they're not fun at all to face, because they keep on dropping traps, constantly slowing you down, and if you take too long, they poof, disappear into the void, and start basically name-calling you, like, ah, oh, filthy tenor, you never catch me, which, in my opinion, is quite infuriating. In fact, I don't, I don't particularly like how much of this, like, how you actually have to get Protea, because, well... Yeah, I don't really particularly like how you have to get Protea, because it just, in my opinion, it involves a lot of busy work, and also the drop chance for actually getting her is really, really just bad. It's, you have to, like, you have to kill a certain amount of enemies in this certain place called the Granium Void, and it's only like, uh, you only get a, um, and you only get like a, what you call it, like, 11% chance. The reason why I was stumbling on my words a little bit there is because normally you automatically block, but apparently that isn't the case, so I just have to block manually by holding down the aim button in this case, I guess. I guess with some weapons you do block manually, maybe they changed it in one of the updates again and I didn't notice. But anyway, I'm just running back and forth here so all the enemies attack me because I'm pretty much showing that you don't need to kill any of these corpus because in my opinion it's actually, I don't know if it's quicker to get this done by just not killing any of the corpus but as you can see, they're all just aiming at me, my ash, like my warframe, and they're not even targeting the console so all you have to do basically is wait for this timer to tick down and another reason why I'm not killing the corpus is because frankly I just can't be bothered. So yeah, this is pretty much a time you have to wait for while well, this console, like, gets hacked or whatever. And here we go, almost done. Yep, so there you go, console's hacked, and now I'm pretty sure you just have to get back to the hand. Oh, I guess not. Oh yeah, now I remember, you have to look for this little Voxelaris dude. Because it's apparently somewhere on the ship and your friends like Utico and the business apparently know about this somehow even though you don't. I don't know how that's possible. I can't explain it because I just said I don't know how that's possible. So yeah, just follow the little yellow marker and either leave the Moes behind or leave their dead bodies behind if you killed them. Yeah. And as you can see, then the two friends are pretty shocked because... The dude you were trying to save just got sucked up by the hand and you don't know what happened to him. So then you have to access another corpus console and more mowers come. And yeah, I might as well show that um, it is also pretty easy just to defeat them. I mean, they're only level 12, so you can pretty much pull out any gun you want and just lay into them. 
Also, generally, Warframe abilities also work pretty well, so I'm just gonna, as I can see here, use a few shurikens and, uh... Because I've leveled up the Warframe quite a lot, like, because this Ash is max level and got some decently high power strength, I can just... I can pretty much kill these mowers using anything. So yeah, kill the mowers if you want. Just don't get too far away from the console like I'm doing right now, because... Enemies will like sneak up on it, and there's some enemies which have uh, melee based attacks. So, as you can see before, that mower, he had lasers, some kind of laser, and he was dealing very heavy damage. Yeah, this cut type. Okay, so it wasn't actually a laser, it was a freezing gun. That was a Juno Galaxian mower. Well, if you're wondering why they're called Juno, Juno mowers, it's because those are the type of mowers you will face in this type of tile set. Also, and that thing there was a uh, Itan Amber Star. Quite useful, actually. Players might want to actually buy them. They are uh, they worth 50 endo each. Yeah, so whether you hold out your melee weapon and block all the shots, or just kill them with all your abilities and whatnot, it really doesn't matter too much. You have to wait for the console progress to finish hacking, like it has now. And then you have to you hear Nathaniel exclaim about something by the void, something is real. And this is what he's talking about, because now you're basically... You're looking at what the, uh, the dude who got zapped by the hand, he was transported to this place, the Granium Void, a different part of the void. And this is what he sees. And then Yudiko and Business, the two friends you have, are like, We don't know what this means, we're confused. Just leave the place and go back to your ship. So, so, so that's exactly what you do. Just go back to your ship. Here I said I wasn't going to talk about the lore, but the mission's honestly taking so long I'm getting some little lore tidbits in it anyway. Yeah, because there's unfortunately no way to speed up a console hacking. I mean, it could have just skipped that to the end, but as you can see there, mission time. Only taking about six minutes, so... You're not, like, skipping wouldn't really, well, skipping, like, ahead and doing a cut in the video again wouldn't really do too much. Yeah, and now you have to go back to Fortuna and, um, watch another cutscene of them talking, which they'll blabber on about this new Warframe, Protea, which is linked to timey wimely wibbly wobbly stuff. That's a Doctor Who reference, and the reason why I'm using that, by the way, is because, yes, Protea is indeed a Warframe all about time travel. And also an even quicker way to get there is opening up the fast travel screen, then traveling to Utico, exiting her dialogue, and going over here. Also the thing I find kind of funny is like, oh Utico, you're right here, and then the moment you go in here, she's also here. So it's like either there's two Uticos, or she's got some kind of teleporting ability that she doesn't tell you. <laughs> wow, I didn't know you could spam A that quick. Oh, I just skipped through that. So, so fast. Oh, by the way, the reason why I'm going back to your ship is because they would have told you, talk to us and then go back to your ship for, like, the next part of the quest, which is beating, beating Nef Anya to the Granium Void. Also, if you can't find it, like, this part of the quest would actually be on Phobos, but if you can't find it, then you can just click this little icon here and then do what's uh, your active quest, which will be the deadlock pro pro protocol at this point. Don't click any of the others or you start other quests and uh, stop this one. So yeah, unlike before, the last mission could have kind of be counted as mobile defense. The one before that was interception. This one is just different. It's a quest only mission because you're just trying to beat Nathaniel to the Granium Void, whatever that means. You're going to find out very soon. So. Again, I'm just going to completely ignore these corpus since I have a destination to travel to. Why would I bother wasting time shooting them? That's my logic here. Also, I like the corpus as a faction, and if I wasn't, like, actually showing you that you can really easily kill the mowers. Okay, that's odd. I don't know why this thing here is just... Ah, finally! I knew that would work. See, I've actually done this before, where I've literally gone and just kind of, well bashed my head against the problem until it went away, and in this case, you're bashing your head against the laser field until it goes away. Yeah, so right now, Nefanyu is just talking about debts and tributes and blah de blah de blah you just have to wait here, because of course there's no objective marker, and then it will of course show up. 
And this is the guy I was talking about before, which is pretty much a DPS check, so they don't enjoy fighting too much. You have to go and kill a treasurer. And I'm pretty sure if you don't kill this treasurer right here, then this mission will actually fail. I, ha I don't know myself, I'm saying I'm pretty sure, because I haven't actually failed this mission before. I've always killed the treasurer. Ah, another laser ball. My old nemesis. Yeah, so I'm actually going to turn invisible here using my second ability smokescreen because these treasurers annoyingly will place traps around. And then, once you're invisible, they don't know where you are, don't know where your traps are. So then, it's what I mean, slow down traps and the like. In fact, I'm actually having a pretty decent hard time trying to get this damn dude. He also tries to turn invisible, but then when he's invisible, you can just put something like a slash proc on him. And when that happens, he'll pretty much, well, he's not only, not only is, his, is these treasures of invisibility really shit, like with other corpus units, like some capture targets, they will properly go invisible. These treasurers always have a bluish outline, so in other words, they're invisible in quotation mark, which I really, really enjoy, because I'd hate this even more if they were fully invisible. Anyway, once that's done, just get over here, and then you make sure all the enemies in the area are dead, because this hand will show up a little indicator saying, oh, you haven't killed all the enemies in the area. Make sure you do that before you access it. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just gunning down all the mowers and stuff that come my way. And I'm also going to hack this console. Why? Because it sets the ship into a state of not... Uh, uh, it sets the ship into a non-alert state. So this will pretty much trick all the other corpus into thinking, oh, the Tenno's been dealt with, some random mower shot them in the arse and they're dead. So then, you offer the uh, volume, uh, the Granium Crown. I can offer this one here. Oh, hold on. More mowers. I can offer this one here because I, correct, I collected it later. This is a later one, but for now you just want to offer this one the Granium Crown you've uh, collected. And then, the hand will suck you in. And now you are in the Granium Void. And apparently, oh, and I thought you could actually slide and stuff, but no, the game actually forces you right now to walk slower. Like I'm pressing the sprint button right now and I can't actually sprint. So the first time I played here, I was, I was here, I was like, oh, I know, I'm going to walk all slow and make it all cinematic just for fun. Apparently, you have to do that. I also wish the bug that was in front of my face right now would just go away. They always seem to do that for some reason. I have no idea why. They just there's these certain like little really tiny bugs where I live, and they just they love to hang around my face. I don't understand why. Yes. Yeah, so again, the two people here will just start talking. Just a minute. If that that clap noise was me trying to get rid of the bug. I usually don't try and have interruptions like this in my videos, but in this case, I just couldn't but avoid it. She is nothing more than a specter of her former self. My beautiful protein. That is why you have been invited here. Yeah, apologies for that cinematic being kind of loud, but I had no idea it would do that because I don't even know what volume that was linked to. Normally I have all my volumes kind of like, kind of low, so you can't really hear it. But in this case, Unavoidable. Yeah, so then these, these specters here will come and try and kill you. There's no real special way you have to kill them. You can just, you can shoot them normally. Or maybe these guys won't try and kill you. Maybe they just look at you. I don't know. I think, no wait, they actually are trying to kill me. Yeah, see that one is using a, some kind of laser on me. So now you have to just listen to Nef Anyo and Provost Granium, which is like the founder of all the corpus talk. And pretty soon they'll just boot you out of this place. Any moment now. Just gotta defeat a few more of these specters. Oh, and you can't attack Protea here. Because she's like... In some kind of, I don't know, time bubble. Yeah, any moment now. This, this is, I got no way to speed this up, by the way. This is how long you have to wait each and every time you either replay this quest or do it the first time. And he's showing up on the screen there for because it's important story moment, something, something, yada, yada. Oh, 
Finally, I got the bug. <laughs> it's kind of funny, honestly. There's like so little to talk about right now because the mission isn't really progressing that I'm just celebrating finally, like, squishing the tiny bug. Believe me, I would have actually liked to keep the bug alive, like I've got nothing against it. But, um, it was trying to fly inside my mouth, so I can hope you understand why I squished it. Oh, and uh, what happened there was, basically, you were sent back in time, and now the business is like, what, what happened? I got a feed of you doing stuff that you never did because you got sent back in time. Like, basically everything you did there, shooting the specters, witnessing that conversation, whatever it was, because I got the characters mute and whatever important stuff it was, you've now been sent back in time, and it's like it never happened. And now you just have to wait for them to finish talking because otherwise the door wouldn't open because this quest really likes to just shove the important story beats towards you even if you don't care about it a bit like you're probably doing right now. Okay, maybe you do care about it a bit, but like I said, I cover all the important story bits and also uh, run a few tests I've um, I came up with on my Word documents. Yeah, I've actually like came up with um, ideas I want to test in this mission to see if they work. Looking forward to that. Oh, and also the reason why I'm hacking this is because I saw that it was orange. If ever there's an orange console and you need to exit the mission, that means you want to hack it because that because orange means that the doors on some of the doors in this mission have been locked and you can't access them and you need to access the console to get through. If it's just white, however, you can just get to the end of the mission. Oh, and as you can see there, a few Spectres for some reason have appeared on the ship and now the like, Travis, Gra Travis Granium Spectres. And um, now they're fighting the Corpus and Moas here, which um, is actually working out in my favor a lot because I like to just, um, in this case, I'm glad I could just run right to the end of the mission. Oh, and if you're wondering how I got that, if you missed it early on in the mission, I just killed a random Corpus and he dropped this. It's a rare mod. So apparently... Uh, the average crewman here can actually drop Hell's Chamber, which is an excellent mod for a shotgun. So, the more you know, I suppose. <laughs> I just realized the reference this one meme where like a star flies across the screen. I might actually <laughs> add it in right after I say more, the more you know. Right, so what'll happen next is that um, Nef Anyo will in your communication, in your inbox, if I can just find it, yet yeah, this one. So, I can play the transmission where basically he's trying to bargain with you and he sounds like uh, pretty much really um, reluctant to bargain with you. But yeah, he then gives you a Zorus boot blueprint because apparently according to him, it's the only thing that can stop Pravius Granum and his Void Spectres from tearing apart Nefanyu's ship. Oddly enough, he's actually telling the truth here, because normally he's just the complete utter lying, money grubbing scumbag. So, the next mission you have to do is a spy mission, which is why I'm just pretty much keeping um, Ash equipped, because this is not only a good frame for dealing damage, it's also a stealth frame because of the second ability for going invisible. However, an even better stealth frame, in my opinion, is Loki. The reason why I don't say Ivara is because there was a recent change to Ivara, where her Prowl ability, I think it was at least a recent change, because um, I've got really high duration on Ivara, yet she still just chews up energy like no tomorrow when you use her Prowl ability, which is like a, a um, an invisibility cloak that you can toggle on and off. Which is why I prefer Ash and Loki much more, because you just use a set amount of energy for cloaking yourself, and then afterwards you just have a certain amount of time that you remain cloaked for, and then once that's over, you'll just have to reactivate Cloak. Oh, and one of the enemies there, they pretty much um, hit me with some kind of... Uh, they, these enemies can hit you with um, an electromagnetic field kind of thing, or EMP thing, where that it makes it that um, some of your energy is taken away. So that's actually kind of annoying, because I need my energy to go and cloak myself. So what I'm doing here is making sure I kill all the nearby corpus and mowers, then I'm going to hack this console because I wasn't invisible previously and the alarm has actually been raised. Yes, you just want to you pretty much want to keep killing all these corpses and trust me this what I'm doing right here is worth it. There's another one that's taken off some of my energy. Because once all the corpses in the area are dead, then there's less chance that they can follow you inside to this spy vault and raise the alarm. Right, so that pretty much that makes it they, they're well covered, they're all dead. Then you just hack this console, and now I'm immediately going to 
cloak myself because I know there's a security camera right here. This corpus here will be alerted, kind of, because I don't have silencing weapons on my mods. I forgot to put them on. And also this right now, I've got the weapon, it's called the Karak Wraith. It is a machine gun, so it seems a bit wonky to put a silencer on a machine gun instead of something like a, a sniper rifle, which will be dealing more damage. What the heck? He's got a machine gun. <laughs> ah, okay, so apparently some kind of camera somewhere saw me. So as you can see, yeah, spy vaults, even though I find them quite fun and I'm usually quite good at them, sometimes you'll be detected for reasons you don't even understand. Like, I'm going to have to go back and actually look at what detected me. Was it a security camera? Was it a corpus? Well, either way, it doesn't matter too much because I was still able to hack the vault. This spy vault is actually quite generous with how it, um... with how you detect it or not. Yeah, so over here, I have pretty much no idea what detected me, because there doesn't seem to be a security camera. There only seems to be a turret. And if there is no security camera, the turret cannot activate. So yeah, I have no idea what actually detected me. So I'm just going to try and be, well, more careful with the next spy vault. And if you're wondering how I'm constantly getting energy, I've got an energy siphon mod on. And also another mod called Coaction Drift, which you get from, um puzzles on a certain tile set, which I don't want to talk about because that might be spoilers. But yeah, that's how I'm gaining so much energy so quickly. I'm actually going to use my, um, my, uh, cloak ability right here to get past the enemies. The only downside is that even if you are constantly cloaking, you will pretty much be guaranteed, unless you've got a really energy efficient build to run out of energy, because this ship is just filled with corpus, more so than other ships like the Silas that have been to. And the corridors are really open and wide as well, so it's just an excellent recipe for being detected. Oh, and those repair kit mods? I have no idea why they're constantly around on this tile set, but I won't say no to picking them up. Actually, I have one idea, like one um, theory, and my theory is that the um, little domestic drones, so the vacuum cleaner bots that are around here, these things, will sometimes run into a wall get stuck and kill themselves and because of that the mod will fly out of them. Because of the corpus here definitely don't kill themselves and I forget if I've ever seen a domestic drone just blow itself up. So yeah, um, pretty much nothing to do here except to get to the uh, next spy vault. And uh, as you can tell here, these map, these tile set is very very large so it's taking me a long time to get here as well and that's even like with a uh, very fast sprint speed because Ash is just in general a fast warframe. He's speedy boy. Yeah, so here, don't bother going into that room. That room there, it won't get you really much. It'll just get like it won't be. There won't be a way to turn off these lasers. You pretty much have to deal with them. Oh, and it's also a good idea to constantly sprint right here because it allows you to oh, the lasers much more. Ah, okay, so right here. This is a bit of a difficult part because there's a camera here that'll pretty much detect you even if the lasers don't detect you. So what I'm waiting for is where I'm waiting for the laser to come back here, that laser to come back here like that. And then I'm going to cloak, run forward, shoot the camera, and then run back in here so I have time to think. And I'm pretty sure the place I have to go is over there. So I'm just going to wait again for the laser to come past. And the reason why I'm doing this is to save time later. Granted, I could get just detected by every single one of these uh, um, uh, uh, spy vaults. But then, if the game forces you to kill a certain number of enemies in the level because you have pretty much been detected by too many people and you need to leave no witnesses so they don't know that you're stealing from the spy vault. Right, so what I did in there was, in here, there was a console and I actually pressed X on it. That's why you heard the button noise. And by pressing it, I have removed all the lasers in the level. However, a really sneaky thing that I don't agree with that the developers sometimes do is they'll put a camera right here. So what I like to do is cloak, then hack the security console as fast as I can before my cloak runs out, and then you can run in the room without any issues. Also, apparently here there's another thing here which allows you to disable the lasers if you wanted to come in from the top, but I don't really know how you would come in from the top since I wasn't doing that. And then you can access the console. And as soon as you have one console here hacked, and the data has been retrieved stealthfully, like I did there, that means that the enemies won't come after you. 
I don't understand why they wouldn't come after you. I guess it's just a little bit of leeway the game gives you. Because realistically, the corpus should, should still be coming after you and you still should need to kill about like a certain amount of them to leave no witnesses. Or, well, I say certain amount of them because exterminate missions have been changed. Exterminate missions used to actually make sense, so um... I'm going to basically be talking a bit about the past here. So, in the past of Warframe, when you played an exterminate mission, you actually had to get rid of pretty much every enemy on the tile set. But now, exterminate missions have been changed so that you have to get rid of a certain number of enemies, at which point the Lotus will declare, good job, Tenno, the enemy is on the run. But, it makes no sense for certain missions, like this one here. Oh, uh, reason why I died, it may have been hard to tell, but uh, I touched that. That was a massive generator, so it hit me with some kind of radiation damage, which then ticked over and I just died immediately. So, if you're wondering why, I just don't touch the generator, and I touched it because I was sprinting too fast. Anyway, as I was saying about exterminate missions. So I preferred the old ones a lot more, because that means if, with the old ones, you'd actually kill every enemy in the level, and then all the enemies would be gone, and it allow you to take really nice screenshots. Yes, Capture allows you to do that, but by removing the old type of exterminate missions and making it so that enemies just keep on spawning no matter what, it made it so that it's uh, worse for machinima creators. If you don't know what machinima means, it's like, um, machinima basically stands for using the in-game models of a game and pretty much like playing as, as like, so let's say you're a player character here, the Tenno, and like acting it out and voice acting to kind of make a story. In fact, um, I'm planning on making one of those very soon. Anyway, what I'm doing here is I was pretty much waiting for my, um, for my stealth ability, um, for me to gain enough energy to activate my stealth ability again. Because I wanted to get up to the top here, because that is how you get in. And from doing previous spy vaults, I know that no matter how much noise you make and stuff, no cameras or corpus will be able to detect you, when you once you're inside here. So pretty much the only thing you have to worry about is these lasers, and I'm pretty much showing you how to get past them now. In fact, I previously, if you watched my How to Get Ivara tutorial series, you would have seen me pretty much do the same thing, because these lasers here are very similar. And then, you just hack the spy vault, and you get the last piece of the Zorus, because if you're looking, if you're paying attention, looking to the bottom of the screen right here, you're actually getting Zorus pieces, which are the pieces for the uh, weapon you need to build with each of these different spy vaults you hack. So now, even though I'm pretty sure I was detected by some sort of camera there, it doesn't matter because... Reasons, I guess. I'm not too sure. Well, you already hacked the, um... You already hacked the spy vault, so the data is gone. But I'm not sure why none of the corpus are alerted because the camera should still be alerting them. And now, the business is just talking about, wow, this Pravos Granum guy, you're kind of working against here because he's trying to destroy Nefanyo's ships and kill heaps of innocent corpus with his specters. He's, um, that's why you're kind of against him. He's, the business is saying, wow, he's super smart, apparently, because he invented some kind of theory, something, something. Yeah, so then you pretty much exit the mission. And the reason why I have no, none of the Zorus parts here listed as my rewards is because I've already completed this quest already, and apparently the second time you complete it, you don't get any further Zorus parts. You only get it the first time. The good news, however, is that the Zorus takes a really short amount of time to build. Basically, it only takes a minute to build, you already have all the Zorus parts you need, and it only takes around 15,000 credits to make as well. Now, I'm going to equip the Zorus, and mine is already level up, by the way, and there's a reason for this. In fact, I'm not going to go into the next mission just yet, so I can calmly explain how the Zorus actually works without having to be rushed by the mission or anything. So you're probably wondering there why the video suddenly cut out and just went to here, and now I'm suddenly in this simulacrum. Well, that's because um, you've ever had one of those moments where you kind of just start talking out of your ass and you don't know what you're really talking about, but you keep talking because you want to sound smart. Yeah, I pretty much did that with the Zorus. So um, it still is the weapon that you're going to need to be able to complete this quest that I'm talking like this quest that I'm talking about in this video. However, 
when I was um I started going on about the, a build you could make for it, and I started talking about how um Fury was really good because it made you be able to throw the Zoras faster, and how Re Prime Reach was really good because it made the explosion radius bigger. When in fact I haven't really checked these things in the wiki, I don't know myself. You're better off just going and looking this stuff up yourself and asking really experienced players to see if that's true. I don't know myself. The two uh, mods I do know, however, that are good for the Zorus in this case is Whirlwind, because it will let you throw the Zorus faster and it will fly faster, letting it fly towards the enemies that will come up soon in the video faster so you can detonate it, thus killing them faster. And then, of course, Quick Return is also a good mod to include on it because it makes the weapon bounce less. Well, what do I mean by bounce less? Mm, there are these pillars right here in the simulacrum, and if you throw your glaive at it, like so, I just have to do, use a melee attack to get it out for. Okay, you use a melee attack to get it out first, and then you throw it. Yeah, normally if you if you don't put any of these mods on it, it will make it so that it'll generally bounce off the pillars and then go and hit different pillars and kind of ping pong go around like a ping pong ball. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Now the next thing that I take forever to cover in the video that I'm going to cut like before this edit that I'm going to cover quicker more like much quicker now is the button to actually use the Zorus. So it used to be you used to hold down the I'm just going to go into the customized controller keys so I can show you what I mean by the way. You used to be able to hold down the fire button and that would um, make you throw it. So as you can see here, I've got the right button on my Xbox 360 controller bound to melee attack. So when I mash this button, I melee attack. And also if I time it, then I do combos. It used to be that you would hold down this web, this button and you would then, um, once you held it down, you would charge up the glaive and then you would throw it. However, due to recent changes in like uh, recent changes and updates to Warframe it now uses the secondary fire button so this here the right stick the right analog stick which I use to look around and aim my weapons and everything if I press this inwards it is not only my secondary fire button my melee heavy melee attack so if I have a um, great sword out or something like the galatine I'll do a heavy melee attack if I have a weapon like the penta I'll detonate its grenades and now that's also the same function for deton for throwing and actually detonating your Zorus. And if we just go into the key bindings here for PC, then secondary fire is mouse button 3. So this may be a little confusing to you at first, but just think of it like this, because this is how it works. Mouse button 1 is your left click. Mouse button 2 is your right click. And mouse button 3 is the scroll wheel. So most mice have it that when you press the uh, scroll wheel inwards, then it will count as mouse button 3, which is what it is in this case. So just press your scroll wheel inwards if you want to do that, if you want to detonate your penta shots, use your glaive and throw it, or do heavy attacks with your galatine. However, keep in mind that some mice have it so that the scroll wheel becomes really, really loose when you click it inwards, and you have to click it again for to not do that. There is no real way I know of actually fixing that other than mm, getting a different mouse. Anyway, there's one last thing I want to cover with the Zorus, and that is the mechanic that you will, will need to use soon enough in the video, and that is detonating it. So for that, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to hold down the right stick to charge it up, once I have it out, of course, then release it, then I didn't do that right, then again, and then press it again when it's already flying, and it will detonate. Now, as you can see there, that happened very, very fast, but that's just the speed I like to do it. If you're having trouble throwing your Zorus and it is too fast, simply go here, and let me just scroll to the end here so I have a free mod space, remove Whirlwind, and now, when I test it, it should most on this other pile of ancients. Funny, kind of funny how I call them a pile. <laughs> That's pretty what they are, though. Then it should fly out much more slowly. Yeah, there, as you can see. In fact, I'm glad I made this little extra edit because I just found out that my um, favorite Zora speed is probably somewhere in the middle. In other words, having that max flight speed mod on the weapon 
feels like it's too fast. However, not having it on feels like it's too slow. So this is why I sometimes have different copies of the same mod. Because if we just go in here and look at what it was called. Okay, so it was in the Naramon thing, I'm very sure. No, that wasn't it. Maybe it was this one. Maybe it was Matarai. Ah, here we are. Whirlwind. Yes, so I had a max rank, uh, rank 9 Whirlwind, but I'm going to now put on a rank 5 Whirlwind and see how that functions. Perfect! So there, yep, as you can see, that's why it's sometimes a good idea to have mods that aren't totally ranked up, because this is the perfect throwing speed for me. So, yeah, now I can pretty much end this part and go back to the original video. So I'm, hope, I'm ho hoping that this was uh, way more to the point, and I didn't ramble on as much as last time. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and this edit. Right. So, the next thing I recommend doing is, before you get to the next step of this quest, is leveling up the Zorus as much as possible, and even putting a blue potato or Oricon Catalyst like I did inside of it. Main reason is because... Yeah, main reason is because you will want this weapon to be dealing heaps of damage, and maybe even having a really long reach, so the explosion is bigger, so you can deal a lot of damage to the enemies that come next, because trust me, you will need that. Because in the next part of the mission, uh, no, I won't spoil it until we get up there, but um, I'll just say that the, uh, you, you pretty much reverse the boss, and this is what I was talking about before when I was saying that this quest is... Uh, not for beginners. So luckily this time you can just alert as many alarms as you want. Because this isn't a spy mission. And right now Nefanyo is just talking and saying that Provost Grand Inspectors are ripping through his fleet, destroying it. And that's why I wasn't moving forward, because the door here hadn't unlocked. Again, the game really, really wants you to listen to its cutscenes. Which, some of them you can't skip. Yes, yeah, so here are all these specters just fighting the corpus, which I'm going to ignore, because, um... I don't need to deal with them, frank frankly. And then they found you activate the self-destructed ship. Because he's a little crybaby, and he's basically saying if... I can't have my fleet, no one can. Wait, wait, I'm gonna break my toys to the mouth of my pram. Yeah, uh, Nefanyu is a really easy character to pretty much hate. And again, you're gonna have to insert the tre a treasurer. So, oh boy, because, uh, I don't enjoy doing that. I don't enjoy fighting those dudes at all. And the reason why I have to hack their consoles is because, again, they locked all the doors. I'm just waiting until I get close to this guy, and then again, I'm going to activate Smokescreen to plug myself, because I don't want him to see me. Ah, uh, apparently I thought he was close by, but apparently he isn't. God, how long it actually takes to find these enemies. Ah, oh, here he is. Excellent. He's just staying still, pretty much. And he has no idea where I am. Yeah, so this is kind of what I meant by I don't really enjoy fighting them. This is just nothing but a DPS check at this point. Yeah, just keep shooting him. Ah, uh, and also sometimes, yeah, they will also... He regained their shield, and this time it happened because he was near a shield all's prey. In fact, I'm just gonna shoot this stupid shield all's prey to get rid of it. Of course, I need to reload. Oh great! Now I'm even. Now I've even got like a uh, energy getting like a proc that gets rid of my energy. 
And now I'm wishing that I actually put the speed mod on the Zoras, because now it's not swinging fast enough. Also, I'm not sure, but this might be the case that this treasurer doesn't actually get away from you, because it would be pretty mean just to say, Oh, wait, Tenno, you lost the mission. You didn't heal the treasurer tr fast enough. About damn time. Now you take now you steal his granium crown, just like before. And now you just wait for the end, like the little mission indicator, the yellow thing to show up. So Yudio can tell you where you can just shove this gradient crown. I'll tell you where I want to really shove it though. Up the next treasurer's ass. Yeah, again, had to kill all the enemies nearby. Which apparently, it still doesn't count. Because apparently this one's got a really, really long radius. Yep, about damn time. And now, just as the ship was about to explode, apparently, I think that's what those explosions are meant to be. Oh, yes, yeah, Utica is there saying, uh, Biz, I don't think they made it because she thinks the ship blown up. But apparently, no, I'm alive and back in the Granium Void. And this time, I don't need to do, like, I'm not stuck in that slow walk animation, so I can just jump and skip over like a rabbit. And now they want you to equip the Zorus, which in this case is just use the melee button. And now these um, uh, Fortuna workers. Uh, I forget what they're called right now, it's not coming to me, but you need to rescue them. And, um, oh yeah, jockeys, that's one of the names for them. Yeah, so you need to rescue these jockeys. And the way you do that is, first off, I like to go invisible, and then these specters will all fight you. Then, what you do, is you shoot them until they become particles. And then, you charge up your glaive. And you try and hit the particles. If you don't kill them fast enough, by the way, then they will pretty much reform. Yeah, like that. And once you've got all three particles charged, then you throw the Zorus, at this little Fortuna worker and detonate it. And then you get Soros, um, Solaris United. Oh, yeah, that's what they call it, Solaris. So you get Solaris United standing and the worker is saved. And then you have to just repeat this three more times. I actually seen on the Warframe wiki that someone was very, very mad about this quest because they didn't understand what they had to do. And I understand if you wouldn't understand as well because. Not only is the glaive kind of finicky to use now, the fact that you have to, like, melee with it first and then press the secondary fire button to chuck it at these dudes, and the fact that you can just miss them quite easily, and the fact that they keep on zapping you, but this person didn't, like, they basically didn't see the transmission that was on the side of the screen where the business was saying, oh, use the grave out, glaive outworld, or use the glaive to hit these specters and charging it up, because he does say it in kind of a roundabout way as well. Yes, at this point, it's kind of like trying to skip stones across the ocean. Kind of hard, it's kind of hard to pull off, and in this case, not even that satisfying when I pull it off. Yep, so then saving the next Vox Solaris dude. And then it's pretty much just repeat the same process again. Chuck it at these dudes. And collect the things. Oh, and the reason why I put Quick Return on this um, glaive is because... I actually want it to not bounce around too much, and I've upgraded with the other, mo other mod that made the, the gold one, whatever it was called, like the quick throw mod, because I want to be able to throw this thing fast, otherwise this mission is going to just take absolutely forever. Oh, and uh, the way you co collect those mods, both of them, they are, one's a rare drop from enemies in the void, and the other one is a, um, a common drop. I don't mean this, by the way, this is the Granium Void, I mean the Void Tile Set, the one with Corrupted on it. In fact, I'm pretty sure Corrupted Lancers actually, like, drop one of the mods. So just kill a heap of them until it finally drops. And at this point, you can finally finish this part of the mission. Just, again, explode the Glaive once it has those three charges. And... you will then be forced to face Protea. 
Yeah, she was the thing I didn't want to spoil. She's pretty much the boss you have to face in this tile set. Reason why I'm charging up the glaive again is because you will need to do that. Oh, Nito! Okay, so apparently you can just charge it. I didn't know this, but uh, what I figured out then why I said Nito is because you can apparently just do a melee attack and whack one of these specters on the head with its charge of the glaive. This makes it so much easier. I was constantly trying to throw it. Right, so Protea here will try and shoot you with her really hard hitting gun and also do backflips. She is actually just pretty much, in my opinion, really annoying to fight, but you can cheat with any stealth frame. Because then she's just like, huh? Where's the enemy? And she'll just kind of point a gun out like this at you. And then you can just shoot her. And then, once she's like this... You just detonate the, um... You have to... De so once she, uh... By the way, by, what I mean by like this is that just then... She went and, um was trying to reverse time. That's what the little ticking noise in the background was, and that's also why she froze. So, if you ever confuse about when she's trying to reverse time, just look for when she freezes in place, and once she's uh, frozen in time like that, you can't hurt her normally, and you have to use the same glaive detonation move that I was using on the Spectres before to hurt her. And then, it's just a case of like, go invisible, bullshit her, like so, throw your glaive, and detonate it, which, um, apparently I skipped that time. Oh wait, no, now she's trying to do it. Okay, maybe she isn't. It's a little complicated, I'm actually getting kind of confused. Yeah, she's also got the, uh, those Gundera, whatever they are, that, um, will constantly just, like, take a lot of health off you. Oh, apparently she's blocking now, so whatever happens, just try and get behind her or something. Yeah, you can see why I don't really enjoy this fight too much at all. In my opinion, it's a, it's a lot of busy work, and they spam you with way too many enemies. And this is also why I was saying that, in my opinion, this is not a beginner's quest. Because... I mean, look at this. The weapon was dealing, like, a, this weapon I've got right now, the Vaco Marlock, it was dealing around about, like, 100 damage per hit to her shields, and now it's doing bugger all against her. She can also apparently just recharge her shields really quickly. Oh, now she's even using her mines against me. Yeah, those those mines basically, they, they give you heaps of slash procs when you go near them. Also, these enemies apparently can also listen to sound. So right now, they don't even have to know where I fully am to actually try and kill me. Yeah, so there again, I just pretty much went and stopped her from rerunning time. You have to just keep on doing that. And once you do that, you know the bu you know you're doing the right thing because the business says like that's it, the cycle's degrading. I could of course put a cut in and just get right to the end of this, but um it already is almost the end. It is annoying how she keeps them just staying up in the air like that, though. Just collecting a few more charges, like so. And it shouldn't be too much longer before she's dead. By the way, this, uh... If you aren't getting super annoyed by this Protea boss fight, and in my opinion, by now you probably would be, this uh, place actually does have some excellent music. But the reason why I haven't got the music on is because... I just don't want to bother listening to it. And also it would detract from me actually talking, like in explaining what you have to do here. Ah, so there, if you didn't see it, she deployed one of her turrets. So apparently, yes, she actually does use her abilities against you. I wasn't aware that she actually ran away from you. Yep, and that's it! 
When she starts glowing like this, you congratulations, you have defeated Protea, which then sends you back in time again. And you're now back on the and you ship, and this is right before you activate the self-destruct system, system of it, and he's saying it's too late, like Provost Granny and Spectres have taken over your ship, and he's like, it's too late, they have, wait, what? Because time just got reversed, and now they aren't on the ship again. And now your buddies, Utico and biz the business, are like, also confused again, because it seems like that entire battle that you just did never happened because you went back in time. Time travel stuff is, in my opinion, very complicated, and you should take great care if you ever try and write it into the story. Personal opinion, in this case, Digital Extremes did not actually handle it that well. They could have handled it a lot better. Which is why, currently for every single story I've been writing, I haven't actually included any time travel stuff, because even though I said Digital Extremes just ha haven't handled it that well, it is very hard to write that kind of stuff. If you want an example of a story that did time travel quite well, I'd recommend the Harry Potter book series. Specifically, the third book, Prisoner of Azkaban, because there is some neato time travel stuff in there that is actually explained in a way that makes sense, in my opinion, makes more sense than Warframe makes sense. If Yep, yeah. They handle time travel in that, in that book better, in my opinion, better than Warframe did, is what I'm saying. Yep, and that covers it. I'm pretty sure this was the last mission of the Deadlock Protocol. Yep, it's all done, because now I have the option to press X to replay the quest, or not. Which I'm not going to do it, because I've just shown you all how to do it. And then, of course, you also from that quest, get the Protea Blueprint, which if you accidentally sell it, can be bought again from Cephalon Samaris. And, as well as that, you also get a capture scene in your inbox, because Provost Granum will give it to you. He also says a really weird roundabout statement, which is basically like, I'm going to restructure the corpus, and they're going to have a new future if they aren't lost too much already. Would you like to be part of a new future? Which I understood only by reading the wiki, because the stuff he says does not sound like he says that at all. So, yeah. This will cover part one on um, how to get Protea. Stay tuned for part two, because in my opinion, frankly, this video has been going on, going on for long enough.